Hi, I'm Slavic and this is Matt from MyDrinkCoffee.com. Today we're going to be doing a latte art tutorial geared towards beginners and home users. To do this tutorial, we're going to be using two of the most popular home machines, the Rocket Apartamento, which is a heat exchanger, and the Ranchilio Silvia, which is a single boiler. To start, we're going to be showing you how to steam uh, milk and stretch it to a nice microfoam, which you're going to need to create that really nice latte art. We're also going to go over the three most popular pours that you'll need to really pour any kind of design. Uh, the easiest to start is going to be the heart, then we're going to go over the rosetta, and finally the tulip. And every other pour is just a combination of those three. First we're going to do a dry run. Uh, Matt's going to show you uh, how to stretch the milk, how to get a good microfoam. And we're using the Ranchilio Silvia first, which is a very common single boiler machine. We have it in steaming mode so the machine is at temperature. The first thing that you want to do is steam any moisture uh, that's built up in the steam wand. So I like to take just a cloth and wrap it around the steam wand to make sure that no water splashes back. You'll just open up the tap and you get a little bit of the, the water out of there. So when you start steaming, the first step is to place the edge of the steam on, the tip of the steam on, just below the surface of the milk. And then you're going to want to turn on the tap all the way to full blast. Once it's going, you're going to lower it so the tip of the steam on is right at the edge of the milk. Now what you're going to hear is little chirps of air, almost like paper ripping. That's a good way to describe it. And that's actually injecting air into the milk and you're creating foam. So the more you do that, the more foam your drink is going to have. Once you're happy with the amount of foam you've created, you just submerge the steam wand and let it whirlpool until it breaks down all of those bubbles into a nice microfoam. And also the milk is at the temperature that you enjoy. Uh, two things you'll want to remember is consistency and temperature. The consistency is very important, so that whirlpool motion that Matt described, which we'll show in a moment, that's a very important step because if the milk and the foam separate, you're not going to be able to pour latte art. You want your milk to be a consistency like wet paint, and it's important to keep it mixed and, and not allow it to separate. The other thing is temperature. Uh, milk tastes best between about 135 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the cooler uh, milk is, it tends to be sweeter. So once you get hotter with the milk, you get of course more temperature, but you also tend to lose the natural sweetness in milk. Anything over 160 in my opinion is undrinkable. Now we'll do all of that in real time. Matt's just gonna froth some milk and, and show you how it's done. To get started, first thing again is going to just make sure that no moisture uh, is in the steam wand. So wrap it with a towel and just open up the tap. You can hear now only steam is coming out. When you're positioning the steam wand in the pitcher, I find it best to hold it a little bit on an angle towards the side, which is going to help you get that whirlpool motion. Now that the steam wand is just below the surface of the milk, I'm going to open the tap all the way and lower it until I get that sound of air injecting into the milk. Now the Ranchilio Silvia is a single hole tip and we have actually two different machines. We'll show you on the uh, Apartamento as well uh, in a few minutes and that's a two hole tip. I find that once you get a good position with the steam on, you don't want to move it around. Just keep it in one spot and just let the steam do the work. As soon as you're finished, make sure to wipe your steam wand off right away and do another purge to make sure that no milk is left in the steam wand. And there you have a nice microfoam with no bubbles in the surface that you could pour some very nice latte art. Yeah, I like wet paint. That's exactly the consistency I was uh, mentioning earlier. We're going to show you a trick that you can do when you're practicing at home so you don't have to waste milk. You can actually use soapy water and what you need to do for that is you just put uh, water inside your pitcher and a single drop of dish soap and you can froth it uh, very much the same way you would with milk. Just don't pour it into coffee because uh, it doesn't work the same way in that sense. But you, you can do the practicing of stretching and practicing uh, uh, mixing the, uh, well, the milk, in this case the water. So we're going to demonstrate that. Matt's going to show you how to uh, froth some soapy water and we're going to use the Apartamento in order to do that. The first step on the rocket, the same as the Ranchilio and really every other machine, is going to be purging the steam on. It's a really good habit to get into before and after you steam any drink. So wrap it again with the cloth and just get the moisture out of there. Now you're ready to steam. So it's going to be the same technique. The only difference with the water is that it does heat up a little bit faster, but aside from that, the technique is going to be exactly the same. 
So we're gonna submerge the steam tip just below the surface and open the tap all the way. And listen for that paper ripping sound. Once you're happy with the amount of foam, submerge the steam wand and let it whirlpool. The Apartamento is a two-hole tip. I mentioned previously that the Ranchilio is a single hole. Uh, the only difference is really uh, slightly in technique. As soon as we're done, purge again, wipe the steam wand. And there is some nice microphone with soap and water. Now that you've mastered microfoam, you're ready to start pouring some latte art. I'm just going to do a quick dry run without any liquid in the cup, just to show you the general technique of pouring latte art. So when you start pouring, what you want to do is tilt your cup on an angle and start pouring with your pitcher a little bit higher. The trick here is to drop the foam below the surface of the crema. So you're going to start high, and as the liquid in the cup reaches the edge, you're going to drop the pitcher right to the surface and continue pouring quite fast. From there, you will just slowly level out the cup and pull through at the end. There's a lot of discussion about whether you should do the milk or the coffee first. And with a heat exchanger machine or a double boiler, you should always do coffee first and milk second. The reason for that is the coffee and the crema doesn't dissipate as quickly as the milk separates. As soon as you have that milk ready, you want to start pouring. You don't want any gap. And if you do have any time in between, you just want to keep that pitcher swirling. You, you, you just move that milk around to prevent it from separating. On a single boiler machine, it's a little bit different. I suggest doing the milk first and the coffee second, and the reason for that is single boilers don't have autofill, so the boiler doesn't refill after steaming. And if you get into the habit of steaming first and brewing second, that boiler's all, always going to be filled with water, which is important. So the first shape we're pouring is the heart. What you want to do when you pour the heart is just pour directly into the center and then you do a pull through at the end. So you're essentially just drawing a circle into the surface. For this next design, I'm going to pour a combination. It's a heart with a wave in it. So it's actually a combination of the heart and the rosetta. What you're going to do is the exact same technique as the heart, but introduce a slight back and forth motion to the pitcher, which is going to create that nice wave pattern in your heart. At the very end, you pull up and through to create the heart design. This next design that I'm going to pour is probably the most iconic. It's the Rosetta, which is what you see in most photos of latte art. So to do this design, you're actually going to start with the same technique as the heart with waves in it. The only difference is about halfway through, you want to start to pull the pitcher back to stretch it out and basically create the leaf pattern. And then the very end of the same as all of the pours, you pull up and through to create a nice line right through the Rosetta. The final pour that I'm going to demonstrate today is the tulip, which is the most challenging of the pours that we've shown. Uh, the reason for that is because it's not a continuous pour, but you need to actually start and stop it several times to create the tulip design. So the idea behind the tulip is you're going to pour a small circle right into the center of the cup, and then when you stop and you pour another circle, and the idea is to push it into the first one, and as you push it, it's going to slowly uh, wrap around the cup and create the nice circular pattern. So we actually did four pours instead of the three that we promised. We added an extra one in there for you. And the key to latte art, like with anything, is practice. Uh, it's a fine motor skill that takes time to develop. So if you don't work in a cafe, uh, invite all your friends and family over on a regular basis and start pouring them great cappuccinos. They're really going to enjoy it. It's a beautiful presentation, uh, and eventually you'll get better at it. In this video, we used whole milk for all of the drinks, which I find is the easiest to get started with when you're pouring latte art. But with a little bit of practice, you can steam and pour latte art with just about any milk that you enjoy. And we really just scratched the surface. This video was just an introduction. Subscribe to our channel because we're constantly adding more tutorials on topics like latte art, coffee, and espresso preparation. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at idrinkcoffee.com. We're always happy to help. Thanks for watching and have a great day.